And then I go along, moving from right to left, I'm reducing the amount of water. So I'm taking the entire watershed and I'm thinking of a valley-wide drought where in every tributary there's say only 80% or 60% of the water necessary to fulfill all the license requirements. Now this of course isn't perfect. We know that typically we have droughts with, that are serious in one stream and not so bad in another. And some streams currently are not restricted so there's actually still excess capacity. Other ones are over licensed. So I'm not perfect here by any means. I'm doing this as a very simple overview. And I'm also treating each stream as a pool. So I'm not looking at the specific location within the stream of anybody who's extracting water. Every named stream is just a pool, and the pools flow from one to the other. Okay. Well, what you see from this picture is that agriculture does pretty well. Agriculture is the blue line on top. So basically, if there's only 80% as much water as is necessary to fill all the licenses, agriculture gets about 80% of its use. In fact, it gets a little bit more. You don't see a little bit more because agriculture, in terms of the purposes expressed on the license, is by so far dominant of all the other ones that the fact that the other people have to cut back sooner only shows up as a little increase in what agriculture is entitled to get. Okay? But you see that some of the other uses fall off pretty quick. The one that falls off really quick is what are categorized as institutional uses on the water licenses. My guess is that's because they only started creating licenses for these things recently, so they're all really junior. I haven't looked into it any deeper to see what specific licenses are. But some of the other uses, like uh, waterworks, falls off pretty quick. Again, agriculture is senior. Waterworks, which would be cities and towns and stuff, some of them are not as senior, so they get cut off quicker. Likewise, um, industrial falls pretty quick, except near the bottom. So there's some really old industrial licenses, but they're only a relatively small percentage of the total industrial licenses. So at the beginning, those old ones hold water, but then most of the more recent uses get cut off. Now this raises one of the questions I think we want to think about. So if we say, yeah, yeah, all your arguments about water markets are real fine and dandy and all that economic efficiency stuff is great, but I don't want it. Okay, do you want this? So this was the one question. Is this the way we want to distribute the uses? Now, I think the next slide actually gets a little closer. Well, this is my first, my summary slide. So the things we get out of that is agricultural licenses are generally the most senior. Now, they're generally also on tributaries. So you notice that it went down almost in exact proportion to the reduction in water. And part of the reason for that is there aren't a whole lot of user, junior users to agriculture who are, down, who are upstream from agriculture. So you're kind of stuck when you've put your reservoir and all of your equipment on a tributary where there's nobody upstream with licenses whom you can tell to stop using water in a drought. So. Now I also looked at some of the largest or most interesting water users in terms of the um, licensee, so the license holders. We've got Seekit at the top with the largest. So on the left panel there's two things going on. The crosshatch part shows the relative license size and the gray shaded part shows the amount of their license that they could utilize. And I've got three cases. One is 75% reduction relative to enough water to fill all the licenses. Center one is 50%. And on the right is pretty serious. There's only 25% enough water to fill all of the licenses. So what happens? Well, let me pick on Penticton first because Penticton goes down ex pretty much exactly in line with the reduction. So Penticton has almost all the licenses on two creeks, and there's nobody else who's a licensee there. So if there's only 75% enough water in those creeks to fill the license, they only get 75% of the water. Okay, that one's fairly easy. But there are other cases where that's not the situation. So in some areas, so Osoyas, which is down right at the bottom, and pumps water out of Osoyas Lake, 
there's a lot of upstream junior users. So a Soyuz irrigation district can call on a whole lot of other people to cut back before they have to themselves. So in fact, if there's only 25% enough water in the whole Okanagan to relative to the size of the licenses that have been allocated, a Soyuz irrigation district still gets all its water. Other people have to cut back. So good for those in a Soyuz. Um, now, a little ways upstream from a Soyuz is the town of Oliver. Oliver has quite a few junior licenses. And so when there's a 75% reduction in the amount of available water, Oliver has 14% of the license capacity that it could fill. Not much. Now, what is Oliver's seniority relative to upstream users? It's very low, of course. How does it get more water? Well, this is a place where I'm thinking that maybe a water market has a place. So maybe the town of Oliver could make a deal with some other user to get more water. Uh, City of Kelowna is kind of interesting too. Um, a 75% reduction available, Kelowna is down to just over 50% in terms of what they're allowed to use. Uh, they fall pretty quick. So Kelowna has a mix of junior licenses and senior licenses. About half are senior, so that when you get all the way out to only 25% enough water to fill all the licenses, Kelowna still gets close to 50%. But they have to cut back soon to that 50% or near 50% level. 